Hi, I'm Gavin, and these are the Coffee Conspiracies. This is the first episode of my field trip to Hull, 2017's UK city of culture, and once the centre of the UK's fishing and agricultural imports industry. This is a region that has struggled over the last 50 years, and as you can see from the overview here, average salaries are below the national median, employment levels are a good 7% below the national average, and even business efficiency is low. Yet when you look at the average business, margins are far higher than the typical 8%, which may be a factor of those low rents and wage costs. Towns trying to produce urban regeneration out of economic deprivation tend to respond in very predictable ways. They chase after whatever ideas are then faddy. Hull is one of those places which appears to have experimented with every bad idea popular in the last 50 years. Shopping centres plonked in the centre of the city? Check. Three of them. Highway running through the centre of the city. Jack. And a terrifying experience as I crossed back and forth. And the result is as expected. A disjointed city with islands of empty properties stranded far from where people gather. And high streets collecting dust as people go into the shopping centres. Looking on our Pikaya map, you can see the extent of those vacancies, especially gathered around the centre of town. Having done all that though, Hull seems to be genuinely trying something different. The new fruit market development is tremendous, with some wonderful restaurants around the yacht basin, and renovation seems to be about revealing the quirkiness of the old industrial buildings, rather than simply replacing them with unimaginative concrete blocks. Throughout the centre of town, roads are being converted into pedestrianised malls, everything is being cleaned up, and it looks pretty good. There are reasons to be hesitant. Far too much of that cheap sandstone being dropped about, which tends to age very badly and which you can find in every UK town. And Hull just feels odd. It's like the town is too big for the number of people who live there. The number of vacancies at 16% is enormous, about twice the national average. And you can see them everywhere. On a beautiful day though, Hull has its charm. There's the smell of the ocean, the prettiness of the waterfront area, and even the excitement of the Alam British Open Squash Tournament, which I went up to watch. It turns out, whatever sport I think I've been playing for the last 25 years, it certainly isn't squash. And there is even, sadly only one, excellent coffee spot. I heartily recommend Thieving Harry's. That coffee was exceptional. Given the number of empty buildings, you'd expect rents to be relatively low, and you have your choice of some lovely locations. I chose the ground floor office on 47 Queen Street. The office is right on the water, with what appears to be plenty of parking nearby, including excellent restaurants and pubs. You're opposite the Deep, which is Hull's Aquarium, and that highway provides direct access. It's being advertised at £19,000 per year, which is only slightly higher than the 2015 valuation. And here's the average office statistics for Hull, and comparing that we can see that £70 per metre squared is almost 20% more than the Hull office average, but you are paying for that trendy location and hipster opens planned space. There's also been upward pressure on rentals, simply because while other commercial premises are empty, at 2.8% vacancy, there aren't that many offices available. By our calculations, as you can see on the property report, this office would suit a company with about 20 staff and be able to earn revenues of almost £3 million a year. In this area, that seems to be an awful lot of lawyers. Wandering around Hull left me feeling ambivalent. I was there during wonderful spring weather, and I grew up near the ocean, so being back there always fills me with a great deal of optimism. There is a lot of development and renewal going on, but there is also just too much stuff. Too many buildings, too few people. In the smaller business communities, like the fruit market or the historic old town around the cathedral, there is a sense that the interrelationships can develop, but elsewhere there doesn't feel like enough economic activity to sustain so much commercial property. That said, and for reasons I'll go into in the next episode, Hull might be sitting on the beginnings of a boom, and you might want to be there for it. If you want to be in the centre of something new, where you might be able to be part of shaping what emerges, and where you can still build direct relationships with other entrepreneurs in a small business neighbourhood, you will enjoy your time in Hull. Until then, let's go get some coffee.